Hey guys, it's Tracy here from Savvy Journey, where I give you tips and tricks to help you travel in the savviest way possible. So today we're going to talk about my tips for what not to wear to Disney World, lessons that I unfortunately learned the hard way. Okay guys, so these are lessons that I learned the hard way. Most of them coming from my first trip to Disney World as an adult with my husband on an anniversary trip. Since then, I have been to Disney World many, many times. Um, for a couple of years, we owned Disney Vacation Club. We just recently sold it. But we have been to Disney World over the last like three or four years, two to three times a year. So I've been 10 plus times. And these are things that I have learned to tweak and hone over my many visits to Disney World and Universal Studios to figure out what is going to work the best for me. These are my practical tips, okay? If you are going for a specific event like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, or you are planning to Disney bound it for a certain event, then those are specific instances where these tips may not apply. But if you are going to be going on a typical trip where you're gonna be in the park most of the day, you're gonna be doing lots of walking, you're there with your family, it's you know a typical vacation, then these are my practical tips that will definitely save your life. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about today before we get into my tips is a very important thing that happens in the southeast specifically, and that is called humidity. Humidity, according to the Webster, Webster Dictionary, is a moistness or dampness in the air, but it's basically the amount of water vapor that is in the air at a given time. And that amount of water vapor, can, the percentage can any, be anywhere from a few percent, less than 10, all the way up to 90%. And in the southeast specifically, I live in Georgia and then also in Florida as well, the humidity can get insanely high. It can get so high that it feels like you are swimming through the humidity. It feels thick. It is wet heat and not dry heat. So when you sweat, your body just holds on to it. The sweat doesn't evaporate. It just stays on your body. So you just feel sticky and wet. So humidity combined with extremely high heat. Now the extremely high heat, like 90 and above, is typically during the summer months, which is really anywhere from you know, mid-May to mid-September. But be warned that the warm season in Florida is can technically be all year round, but it's really from around um, early March to mid-November. But that being said, I have seen extremely high temperatures even in December and January, okay? So you still want to be prepared for hot regardless and always check the weather report before you pack for a trip to Disney World, okay? Okay, so these crazy hot temperatures combined with the humidity, which is pretty much a constant in the southeast, especially during the summer, leads to a dirty little word that nobody likes to talk about. What is it? chafing. It happens to everyone. If you have thighs, it will happen to you, my friend. So you better prepare for it. And that leads me to my tip number one, which is to prepare for chafing. Okay, so chafing, like I said, is going to happen, all right? If, like I said, you're a grown-up, you've got thighs, it's gonna happen, all right? So what you can do is you can prepare for it and you can hopefully prevent it. So there are easy ways to prevent chafing, okay? So the first and easiest go-to method for chafing is to use powder. Um, you could really use any kind of powder, of course, but I definitely recommend that if you're going to use powder, that you use something like Gold Bond powder. Um, this is going to be cool. It's it's made specifically for this kind of thing. So I definitely recommend gold bond powder. Okay, so the downside to powder is that it will wear off over time and it can be really messy when you're putting it on. So instead of powder, my go-to is to use gold bond friction defense. 
it is a stick that you just rub onto the parts of your body that are going to be rubbing up against each other. I recommend applying it to both sides, you know, so basically both of the inner thighs. This will save you. Um, I have seen it last up to five hours. Um, so if you're going to be at the park from like opening to fireworks at night and you know the kiss good night and leave, then I recommend that you take it along with you and reapply halfway through your day or when you feel like it's starting to, to chafe a little bit. But I highly recommend the friction defense. Okay, so the third option for preventing chafing, if you're going to be like me and wear dresses in the park, we're going to talk more about that in a little while, um, but is to wear a short underneath your dress. This could be a biker short, it could be just a simple running short. I prefer to wear slip shorts. This is my preferred slip short. It's a skimmy, which is made by the Jockey brand. This is just a typical slip short that's nice and comfortable, but you can also get some that have more control on top. Um, you can get them different lengths. You can get high thigh, mid thigh, all the way down to your knees. I do recommend if you're going to wear the mid thigh to high thigh um, that, and you're going to have some rub still at the lower part of your thigh, I do recommend in addition to your slip short to wear some gold bond in between like your, the part of your body that's still going to rub. So just remember that chafing is real and it's going to happen to you. So just prepare for it, okay? Um, if you don't, it's gonna itch, it's gonna burn. You're not gonna wanna go to the park the next day. You're gonna wanna have a pool day. And the last thing that you want on your vacation is pain and irritation, right? So just do what you need to do to prevent it. Okay, so the second tip that we're gonna be talking about today is shoes. All right, so my first what not to wear with regard to shoes is do not wear teaks, okay? Um, and the reason I say this is because I've seen a bunch of other articles pop up like on Pinterest that are recommending to wear teaks to the park. They may be okay if you're in Disneyland or maybe you Disneyland Paris or somewhere like that. Um, but if you are in the, in Disney World in the summer especially, please don't wear your teaks. They're they're leather when your feet start to sweat they're not going to be kind to your feet and when they get wet they shrink a little bit which makes them uncomfortable so if you're going to wear teaks to the park definitely wear them during the cooler months of the year or if you're just going to go like in the evening to disney springs or in the evening to dinner and fireworks and maybe you could get away with it but please don't wear them all day um i love teaks they provide me great support i'm usually um on my feet all day for my day job as a teacher um so i really love teaks for that purpose because they're professional and they're cute and they um uh give me plenty of support um but please don't wear them to the parks okay <laughs> What else should you not wear to the parks as far as shoes go? I recommend that you don't wear high heels or flat flip flops or really stay away from any shoe that doesn't have any support. Now, like I said, if you're Disney bounding or you're going for a special event, then go for it, wear your high heels. Um, and some people disagree with me. Um, I understand that, like, like I said, if you're going for a specific event or if it's what makes you feel comfortable and beautiful, go for it. But these are my practical tips. If you're gonna be in the park, all day walking and there's so much walking when you're at Disney World you will walk more than you ever imagined you could walk I think when I tracked my steps one time when we went to three parks in one day um, we walked like up like almost 10 miles in a day so just pre-prepare so just be prepared that you're going to be doing a lot of walking and you want to have a shoe with really good arch support in it, okay? You want to keep your feet happy, especially if you're going to be on vacation going to the parks multiple days in a row. Please, you want to keep your feet happy. Okay, so what kind of shoe do I recommend? Okay, so my shoe of choice during the summer months especially are going to be Crocs. Yeah, I said it. Crocs. Um, I have never been a fan of the typical traditional Crocs. I don't think they're cute at all. Um, but these are actually Crocs. Um, they are the flip-flop kind. Um, they have great support. They're cute. I also have a second pair that actually looks more like a sandal even than the other ones and you can barely tell that these are Crocs but they really are Crocs material and they have plenty of support in them. You can tell I've worn these a lot. I've worn these to the beach as well. 
But the great thing about Crocs is that it provides that support to your foot. They're nice and comfortable, but the other great thing is that they dry really fast. Um, in Florida, the weather is unpredictable. It does rain a lot. So you want to have a shoe that's going to dry really quickly because the last thing you want is to be walking around in wet shoes all day. Even my husband will wear Crocs. And as you can tell, I mean, they do, I think these probably look more like Crocs than any other Croc, but they are comfortable, they are cool, and they dry fast, just like my Crocs do. So definitely, summer choice for men or women is a good Croc sandal. But whatever kind of shoe that you wear, if you wear a sandal, just make sure that it's nice and comfortable. So other flip-flops or sandals that people have recommended to me that work for them in the parks would be Clark's flip-flops, as well as the Sanuk, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the Yoga Mat flip-flops. Um, so either of those apparently also work great. But let me know, what kind of shoe do you wear in the park? Let me know in the comments section below. Obvious choice for a shoe when going to a theme park is going to be a tennis shoe, right? I don't like tennis shoes during the summer or warmer months just because I don't like wearing socks. I feel like it's e it just feels cooler wearing a sandal. Um, but during the cooler months of the year, I do like wearing a tennis shoe. My tennis shoe of choice is going to be a Skecher tennis shoe. I really like the kind, like this one, I have two pairs that are similar to this. I really like the kind that slip on, um, and I can even go without socks in these if I want to, but it's the memory foam. There's really good support. They're really comfortable. I will say about getting your shoes wet, it is going to rain in Florida, even on the months when you're going to wear tennis shoes. So one savvy reader recommended to me to take some newspaper with you to the parks. So if your shoes get soaking wet, you can stick the, t the newspaper inside of the shoe and overnight it will absorb the water and help them dry faster. But my last tip with regard to shoes is just to make sure that you bring more than one pair, okay? Because if you do have any issues with rubbing with your shoes, you will be able to wear a different pair that doesn't rub in the same place and it will save your feet from the blisters getting too bad. Um, and also just make sure that you don't wear a new shoe for the first time in the parks, okay? So make sure you break in any shoe that you choose to wear at Disney World before you get to Disney World. Okay, so rain. Like I said, rain is going to happen in Florida. Um, most of the time it rains, you're going to be aware ahead of time because of the forecast, but sometimes you might just have a sudden downpour. So you really want to be prepared for rain. So on our first trip to Disney World, we just took our North Face raincoats, the kind that roll up into a bag like this. Um, there are t a couple of downsides to carrying a raincoat like this. So the first one is that a, ra a regular raincoat only goes to about your, your waist or your hips. So if you're caught in a downpour, your lower half is going to get soaking wet anyway. The other downside is that it does roll up into a nice little container like this, um, but it's not always the easiest thing to get in and out quickly of its container. And then the container is still big and pretty heavy. So you don't want to have, whenever I go to the parks, I talked about this in my other video, but I like to keep things in my bag as light as possible. And a raincoat like this in my bag is going to be heavy. So your best option to prepare for rain is just to take some good ponchos, okay? They don't have to be super expensive. These are just the ones that cost a dollar at Walmart, which are the ones that I prefer. I don't recommend buying the ones from Dollar Tree. Um, they don't cover as much of your body. Um, they really only come to like here on your sleeves and then they, they don't go all the way down necessarily. Um, and then they also tear really easily. Um, but the Walmart dollar ones are really good. They cover more of your arms arms and come down farther. So you want a poncho that's going to cover more of your body and truly protect you in a rainstorm. Okay. Um, you can also buy them on Amazon pretty inexpensively for multi ones to a pack. Um, even if it doesn't rain, ponchos are really great for other things like um, if you're going to sit on the ground for a parade and the ground is dirty and you want something to sit on, you can put one of these down or you can put it down on a bench if you're eating outside. So they're really great. The great thing about ponchos is that 
they're disposable and you can be in your rainstorm once the rain is gone you can just tear it off and throw it in the trash no problem um, the Disney ones are also really great but you want to reuse them so you want to take a gallon size bag to stuff your poncho in when you're not using it um, the great thing about the Disney ones although they do cost a little bit more in the parks is that I've heard I haven't had this confirmed but I have heard that they basically have a lifetime warranty so if you could wear the same poncho for like 10 years and if it tears it could be like like I said a 10 year old poncho you could take it into the shop show them the tour and they'll give you a new one for free that's what I've heard like I said I haven't put it to, te to the test but you definitely want to have some way to prepare yourself for the rain that is inevitable on a trip to Disney World all right, so my what not to wear tip number four is to not wear jeans to the parks, okay? I'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree with me on this one especially, but don't wear actual jeans to the parks, especially during the warmer months. Um, jeans are thick. Um, they're heavy, um, they're going to increase the chafing issue, um, especially, and even jean shorts if you can help it, um, especially the ones that like roll up on the ends. Um, your shorts are going to meet somewhere on your thighs where that, ch where that rubbing is going to happen and it's going to increase increase the chafing potential it's up to you with regard to the jean shorts but please don't wear jean pants it's okay to wear pants like my mom for instance prefers to wear a light cotton pant during the summer so if you don't want to wear shorts or dresses sometimes pants may be your really your only option so it's okay to wear pants but wear something that's light something that's airy something that is going to help prevent the chafing and keep you from over sweating or overheating um, so like I said you just want to prevent any pain if you can while you're on a trip to Disney World. Okay, so what do I wear if I don't wear jeans or typically shorts to the park? I will say I do sometimes wear shorts to the park. Um, I will wear a lighter, more linen type of short and make sure I wear that gold bond friction defense on my thighs to prevent that chafing from happening. But what do I wear normally? I wear dresses. I love wearing dresses. Why do I like wearing dresses? Especially during the warmer months. They are airy, they are light, they are cool, and I feel cute and beautiful in them. And I like feeling cute, especially when I get my picture taken with one of the Disney princess characters. I want to feel beautiful and, and special. So here are some examples of my favorite dresses. And all of my dresses are from Torrid. Torrid is not sponsoring this video. I'm not even an affiliate of Torrid, but I love their Disney themed dresses. Okay, so tip number five is please don't forget your sunscreen. Okay, so skin cancer is real. Please take it seriously. You're going to be out in the blazing sun. Wear your sunscreen, reapply every hour like you're supposed to, and prevent the sunburn. The sun is hot, it is bright, you will burn faster than you can say Mickey Mouse, okay? I have seen so many families at the parks or at the pools and they're like bright red lobsters and I'm just like, those poor people, I feel so bad for them that they burned. And once again, that's going to be something that's painful, that's going to pull away from the magic of the trip if you're hurting on a trip because you got sunburned. So make sure that you're applying your sunscreen, you're reapplying your kid's sunscreen, and just please prevent the sunburn, okay? All right, and so tip number six is with regard to makeup. My what not to wear tip is to please don't overdo the makeup. Once again, some of you are gonna disagree with me on this, and like I said, if you're Disney bounding, if you're going for a special event, if you're only gonna be in the park half or less of the day, and you like the full face makeup, then go for it. If it's what makes you feel confident and beautiful, do it, do you, okay? Um, but I prefer to not wear heavy makeup. Like I said, that humidity and that high heat, your makeup is either going to melt off your face and make you look like a zombie at the end of the day, or you're not going to look like you put any, any makeup on at all by the end of the day. Um, but regardless, the makeup is going to melt off. So like I said, that humidity, that vapor in the air, it is going to make your hair frizz. Um, when I'm in other parts of the country, like when I'm in California where there's less humidity, my, it's blissful. My hair is so happy. But in the southeast, humidity is ever present. You're going to walk out the door and it's a go from looking like this to looking like this. 
yeah so now remember using heat on your hair blow drying it using a hair straightener using a curling iron all of those elements are going to increase your chances of frizz happening okay so you want to try to use as little heat as possible you can um, if you have really thick hair like mine use a leave-in conditioner or some side some sort of anti-frizz serum my preferred leave-in conditioner is the beauty protector protect and detangle it smells so good and it feels really nice in my hair but I don't blow dry my hair, especially during the warmer parts of the year, okay? So what I do is that my hair is naturally wavy. It's kind of like half wavy, half curly. When I just brush my hair and let it air dry, it can't make up its mind whether it wants to be curly or wavy and it does this like messy like half and half thing. So I need to help it out just a little bit. So when it's wet and after I've brushed through my leave-in conditioner, I'll take um, sections of my hair and I'll just twist it like this. Um, and I will leave it and it'll just air dry and it'll air dry with like, like loose kind of ringlet curls in it. Um, so do something, do whatever you need to do to allow it to um, dry naturally um, because that will decrease the amount of frizz. It's still going to happen on some level regardless, but you can decrease it a little bit if you want to. If you have naturally straight hair, um, then obviously you can just brush it and let it air dry straight. Um, if you have thicker hair like me, um, then you're, then you could use the method that I recommended. Um, but you could also, if you're cool with it, you can pull your hair into a ponytail or you can rock those pig braids or pigtails. Remember, we're at Disney, you are allowed to be a child. <laughs> Okay, so what about makeup? So for me, I'm never really a full face makeup gal. I'm more of just like a concealer person anyway, but I will wear concealer to the parks. So my personal concealer of choice is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Um, it is a uh, full coverage concealer, so I do get more coverage with it. So I will definitely still wear concealer to the parks. And then I'll wear some sort of setting powder. So I used to like the Bare Minerals powder, but now I'm all about the Tarte Smooth Operator. Um, it is an Amazonian clay finishing powder. It's white, but it doesn't go on white. It goes on transparent, um, but it's super light and it makes my skin fairly, feel really nice after. So I don't do all of the contouring and the highlighting, all of that, like I would normally do um, from day to day. So what I like to do is I like to use a moisturizer that has illumination in it. So I really love the Garnier Skin Active Glow Boost Illuminating Moisturizer. So it just gives like uh, a glow to my face. And then for highlighter, I like to use a liquid highlighter. I feel like it stays on longer throughout the day. So my absolute favorite highlighter when I'm at the park is the Beauty Crop Glow Milk Highlighter. This is a sample and I'm starting to run out. And once again, I'll just put that like on my cheekbones, on my nose, that sort of thing. And then for my eyes, I try to keep it simple. I don't do a full eye. When I'm in the park, I like to use cream eyeshadows. I really love these LOC, I don't know if you say LOC or LOC, but I really love these LOC um, cream highlighter pencils. Um, it has a shimmer to it. Um, and it's really nice because even if the color may wear off by the very end of the night, I still have some shimmer on my eyelid. And uh, I have a, a set of them I actually got from Birchbox. Um, but some sort of cream eyeshadow is great. If you want to go full on sparkle, you can just get yourself some cream sparkle eyeshadows. They'll really make your eyes sparkle. All right, so when I'm in the parks, I do not wear eyeliner. I just try to wear a waterproof mascara. So my preferred everyday mascara right now is the Bad Gal Bang Benefit mascara um i love this stuff i'm not sure if you can get it in waterproof if i can find it on waterproof on amazon i will link it below but the 
but the waterproof mascara that I have right now that I'm using, this is actually a trial version, but I have the Too Faced Better Than Sex waterproof mascara. Um, but really any waterproof mascara will work. Why waterproof? Um, well, one, there are water rides and one, and again, you're going to be sweating. Okay. So waterproof is just safer. <laughs> so what are some extra things that I do recommend wearing in the park? Definitely accessorize and enjoy being a child and embracing Disney while you're there. So wear your themed dresses if you can find them. Okay. Wear your mini ears. So you can get the mini ears that are themed to specific characters at the park. So I have my um, Sleeping Beauty pair. But you can also get them inexpensively at shops like Charming Charlie's. You can even find them in the kids section at Walmart, like the um, party section at Walmart, like the party favors. This one I found at Charming Charlie's. But you can also find them super inexpensively on Etsy. And you can get them themed to like any character. There are so many cute themed character ones that I have found. Um, but you can also just get them in the specific color that you like very inexpensively. But if you don't want to do the mini ears, you can also do the floral headbands. Or you can just save your really fun headbands for Disney World. So you can wear your nice big bows. I like to wear this one with a Minnie Mouse dress that I have. So you can definitely just go all out, enjoy yourself, like I said, be a child. Embrace what Walt Disney wanted for Disney World, for everyone to feel comfortable, for everyone to have fun, and everyone to feel like a child when they're at Disney. Okay, so those are my tips for what not to, and of course, what to wear to Disney World. What are your tips? Do you agree with mine? What are your go-tos for shoes, outfits, makeup when you're at Disney World? Let me know in the comment section below. And remember, be savvy and enjoy the journey. See you next time. Bye.